In this video, we're going to start chapter six, which covers differential equations. This first video covers the general and particular solutions to differential equations. If you'll recall from our studies in Calculus 1, a differential equation in x and y is an equation that involves both x and y and also the derivatives of y, so y prime, y double prime, etc. So for instance, 2xy prime minus 2y equals 0 is an example of a differential equation. Notice there's an x, there's a y, there's a y prime. I could have more than one, so I could have the second derivative or third derivative. Uh, in this case, I just stuck with the first one. Now, if we have a function that is a solution of the differential equation, it's considered a solution if we can replace y and y prime and y double prime and whatever derivatives we have of y with that function and its derivatives. So for instance, in my example here, I have f of x equals 3x. Now I know that that just means y equals 3x and y prime would be the derivative of 3x, which would just be 3. So now I'm going to take my equation, 2xy prime minus 2y equals 0, and I'm simply going to replace y prime with 3 and y with 3x, and then I'm going to see if the equation is satisfied. So 2 times x times y prime, which is 3, minus 2 times y, y is 3x, equals 0. 2x times 3 is 6x, 2 times 3x is 6x, so 6x minus 6x is 0, and 0 equals 0. Therefore, we can say that this function, fx, f of x equals 3x, is a solution of the differential equation 2xy prime minus 2y equals 0. So some differential equations have many solutions that differ only in the value of the constant. For example, we have the differential equation y prime plus 3y equals 0. And we can show that every solution to that differential equation is in the form of c, where c is some arbitrary constant, and then e to the negative 3x. So let's just test that theory. Let's say f of x is 5e to the negative 3x. Then f prime of x, or y prime, would be, remember to find the derivative of an exponential function, we would take e to the negative 3x, and then we would multiply by the derivative of negative 3x, which is of course negative 3, which gives me negative 15e to the negative 3x. So going back, so this would of course be y, and this is y prime. Going back to the differential equation, I can say y prime is negative 15e to the negative 3x, plus 3 times y, y is 5e to the negative 3x, and I'm asking does that equal 0? So this is negative 15e to the negative 3x plus 15e to the negative 3x, and that does in fact equal 0. So again, this general solution we showed specifically for a constant value of 5, but we can see that that same pattern would hold true no matter what I replaced C with. So this is called a general equation, and a general equation is going to have a C, or perhaps more than one C. And in fact, the number of constants, they're called arbitrary constants, is determined by the order of the differential equation, which is of course just the highest order derivative in the equation. So here, this is just the first derivative, so we only have one arbitrary constant. If we had the second derivative, we would have two. You get the idea. Here's another question for us to try now that we have a little bit better feel for differential equations and the order of differential equations. And I specifically chose this question because it first of all dealt with trig functions and also because it was a second order derivative. So again, this is a second order differential equation because this is y double prime. 
So again, it's going to take some work. And the reason that I wanted to choose a question like this is that quite often, especially if you have a tendency to use the back of your textbook or a solutions manual of some sort, you really miss out on a lot of the math. So we're asked to determine if the function f of x equals c1, now again, c1 is just an arbitrary constant, c1 e to the negative x cosine x plus c2 e to the negative x sine x is a solution to the differential equation y double prime plus 2y prime plus 2y equals 0. Now if you look in the back of the book, they're just going to give you what y is. Now of course we know what y is because y is that function that we're given. And then they're going to give you the solution that's going to look like this. And so this is fine if you want to simplify your solution, but it's going to take some work to get there. So if I'm your teacher, and I am, and I'm going to look at your work and say, okay, clearly this person isn't doing the math themselves because they went straight to this equation when clearly that's not the intermediate step. So I will be looking for this. And let's just refresh our memories as to how to find derivatives because maybe it's been a while since you've had Calc 1 or maybe you just finished Calc 1. Well, let's take a look at the first one. If I'm trying to find the derivative of c1 e to the negative x cosine x, this is two things that are being multiplied. So of course that means the product rule, which means the product rule says I'm going to take the first value, c1 e to the negative x, times the derivative of the second. So the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. Remember, anytime you take the derivative of a co, it's negative. So negative sine x, and then plus the second, which is cosine of x, times the derivative of the first. Now we just talked about how to find the derivative of an exponential function. I would take c1 e to the negative x, and then the derivative of negative x is negative one, and so all of this is the derivative of what I had boxed in green. And then, of course, if I look at my second value, I'm doing the same thing. It's product rule yet again. So it's the first, c2 e to the negative x, times the derivative of sine, which of course is cosine of x, and then plus the second, sine x, times the derivative of the first, which is c2 e to the negative x, and then again, chain rule says the times negative one. And so again, this is all of the stuff that is the derivative of that second portion of y. So I don't care if you show this at all, because honestly, I wouldn't. I wrote it there because that's what the back of the book says. So I want you just to be aware that don't just rely on what the textbook is telling you. You really need to make sure that you understand how to get it yourself. Now, the reason I want to keep it exactly as it is, the, not the one I have crossed off, of course, but the part that I have boxed in green and blue, is because now, of course, I have to find the second derivative. And the second derivative, it's going to be a lot easier to find if I have it in this form. So again, the second derivative would require me to do all of this work, which is the product rule, and then the product rule, and then the product rule, and the product rule, just over and over and over. So I'm not going to go through that one step by step because it's really the same steps that we just went through. But again, if I were just looking at the back of the book, I would find this solution. Now, there's nothing wrong with this solution as long as you understand where it came from. And of course, where it came from is that I had to do all of the math. So I had c1 ex negative cosine of x, and then I had c1 e to the x cosine of x. So these two babies canceled out. And then these two is where I got 2 c1 e to the negative x sine of x. And then continuing, I had c2 e to the negative x negative sine of x and then this one canceled out because it's positive. So this one was a negative and this was a positive and then I have two of these and that's where I got 
negative or minus 2 c2 e to the negative x cosine of x. So hopefully that makes sense. I wanted to talk through some of the work but not you know bore you with all of the work but you get the idea that you shouldn't just be finding out what the derivative is using some online calculator. If uh, you're in my class I'm going to be looking to see that you have shown that work to arrive at the solution not that just you arrived at the solution. Now here's the bad news I haven't even answered the question yet here's all of the work that I needed to do to be able to answer that question. So I've copied over y, y prime, and y double prime, and I went ahead and did some substitution just to make the video just a little bit shorter, but as you can see, what I did was y double prime, I just left pink, and so y double prime is here, and then it's plus 2y prime, and so I went ahead and multiplied everything by 2 when I, mul when I uh, plugged it into my equation, and then plus 2y, so again I took 2 and 2 and wrote those out. So again I did that substitution at the beginning just so you could see and I didn't have to recopy it all while I was talking to you. So now let's see what um, I'm trying to do. Again I'm trying to determine if that function is a solution, so I'm trying to verify that this is all going to equal 0. So I'm pretty much going to go through the same process I did before. I've got 2c1 e to the negative x sine x. And here I have negative 2c1 e to the negative x sine x. So these two is a plus 2 and a minus 2. So those are going to cancel out. And let's see what else I can cancel out. I have minus 2c2 e to the negative x cosine x. And let's see if I can find something to cancel out with that. Here I have positive 2, c2, e to the negative x, cosine x. So those are going to cancel out. Then I have minus 2, c1, e to the negative x, cosine x. And I have plus 2, c1, e to the negative x, cosine x. And so those are going to cancel out. And then I have minus 2, c2, e to the negative x, sine x. And plus 2, c2, e to the negative x, sine x. And so I can see that I do, in fact, have 0 equals 0. So I have determined that this function is, in fact, a solution to the differential equation given. But again, the point here is that it would take a lot more work than what you're going to find in any solutions manual. So make sure that you're doing your own work and that you're understanding these concepts yourself. I want to go back to our first general form example. We had a differential equation of y prime plus 3y equals 0 and a general form solution of f of x equals c e to the negative 3x. Now we chose an arbitrary constant of 5 and again that's the one graphed there in purple and we can see what those solution curves look like for different values of c. So I've chosen a c value of 1 for the red line, a c value of negative 2 for the blue line, notice it is flipped upside down from the others, flipped over the x-axis, the y uh, I'm sorry, the C value of negative one half for the green line, again, it is flipped over the X axis compared to the other curves. And then of course, Y equals five E to the negative three X from our example when we arbitrarily chose five. So the question is, which one of these curves is the right curve? And the right curve is going to be determined by initial conditions. So what they're going to do is they're going to give us some xy value that tells us that the solution curve, for instance, goes through the point 0, 1. And then, of course, if we know that, then it's pretty easy to determine what c would be. So let's take a look at how that is going to work mathematically. So let's take a look at an example now that kind of puts all of that together for us. First, we are to do what we have already learned how to do, which is verify that the function y equals c e to the negative 6x 
is a solution to the differential equation y prime plus 6y equals 0. So we're going to stop right there for now. That's the part we should already understand because that's what we've been working on. So I know that y is equal to c e to the negative 6x. Of course, that would make y prime would be c e to the negative 6x, and then chain rule says take that times negative 6. Now, I'm totally okay with you going straight to negative 6 c e to the negative 6x. I just want to make sure it's clear where those values are coming from. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in, just as I did before, into that differential equation and verify that y equals c e to the negative 6x is a general form solution to that differential equation. So y prime is negative 6 c e to the negative 6x plus 6 y, y is c e to the negative 6x and I need to verify, does that equal zero? Well, this of course is negative six CE to the negative six X, and this is positive six CE to the negative six X, and when I add a negative six and positive six, I do of course get zero. So now I have verified that that function is the general form solution. Now, we talked before about the fact that C could be any constant, it's an arbitrary constant, so really, any value works. When they ask me to find a particular solution, they're saying, okay, we realize there are an infinite number of curves that would satisfy the equation, but we want to know the one particular curve that's going to go through y equals three when x is equal to zero. So this is actually pretty straightforward. All we have to do is take this general form equation, so I'm just going to call this part two. So for part two, we're going to take this general form equation, and I'm just going to plug in y is three and x is zero to solve for c. So if I plug in three and I plug in zero, that gives me three equals c e to the zero. Well, anything to the zero power is one, so really I just have three equals c. So what is the particular solution? I'm going to write the particular solution just like this, and I'm going to replace c with three. So my particular solution is y equals three e to the negative 6x. That is my particular solution. It is me finding that value for the constant c based on the initial conditions. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at slope fields.